Hi, welcome to District 57 Hybrid Club Best Practices. And today, the people who registered have a mix of experience doing hybrid clubs and some people who have only Zoom and want to learn. So today's going to be more of a round table. I'm Bette Bullhofer. I'm the District 57 Hybrid Chair. And that is a fun position. I work for Sally. She's my boss. The, uh, uh, I was going to say vice president of education, but that's not uh, what her title is, but that's basically what she is. So Sally is really looking for us to be the leader hybrid in the globe. We have been known to lead on a lot of different areas. We were the first district to launch pathways. So I'm interested in helping her fulfill that mission and that we create the best practices for the rest of the world to follow. So today, if you have some best practices that are working, I want to hear from you. And this, this meeting is only scheduled for 30 minutes. Does everyone see that on their calendar? So we're going to do it quickly. If anyone has a few extra questions, I can stay a little bit later than that and, and just see. By the way, we recorded last one of this, which was in August, I believe. And that is linked on our Facebook group. Does everyone know about our Facebook group? No? Oh, boy. Let me go grab the link for the Facebook group. I opened it up because I had it as a private group for a little while, and I think that was not helping people find it. So that was, okay, here. So go ahead and click on that, and you can join the Facebook group. And what one of my main goals as the hybrid chair is that we create a learning community where people are sharing what's working. All right. There's going to be probably a thousand ways to set up a hybrid club, right? There's going to be different angles, different size groups, different kind of environments with, with screens and someone will have a TV and someone will have like a projector. There's going to be all these different kinds of arrangements. And so what I would like us to do is share what's working in the group so that we can sort of learn from each other versus there being some one way to set up a room, which is impossible because everyone's room is going to be different. All right. So my plan is mostly to see who on here already has things working and I can share the way my hybrid club is working also and then get some questions. Actually, maybe we should just start with the questions. Um, before we even jump into like who's got what and how's it working because we do have a recording from last time which is really good with like the top three best practices from a group of people who have been doing hybrid for maybe even a year and it's been working really well so let's start with who is try who's hybrid curious and wants to know things and and is willing to ask a question to the group anybody hybrid interest oh all right and nancy um I definitely know you. We've we've met before. So that's good to see you again. Okay, anyone else? And there's a bunch of people who have their videos off, which I hope you guys can come on video so we can we can chat. I know Monica. I don't know. I don't know if I know Ryan. Maybe I'll recognize you when I see you. All right, Karen, I just got your request. Yay, Monica. Good to see your smiling face. Okay. Anyone else hybrid curious and has questions? Okay, so Monica is raising her hand, and then Karen looks like she's about to say something. Oh, Zach. Yay. I mean, Ryan, sorry. Ryan, I was uh, reading your last name. This lock. Okay, so so Karen, do you are you running a hybrid meeting right now that's working well? We are, but always looking for best practices, other Ooh. ideas. All right, good. Okay. And Monica, are you trying to figure out how to do hybrid or what, what's going on right now with you? Yes. So Ryan, Kyoko, and I are all in the same club, Confidence Builders. And we just started doing hybrid, I think, three weeks ago, maybe four weeks ago. So we're still trying to figure it out. And um, I, I know we've done some research and are ordering some more equipment. Ryan's working on that. He's our president. But I guess the main question is how do we make sure everybody's seeing and hearing each other without getting feedback from too many computers going at the same time? And um, just, I guess, what's the best practice for that? Okay. 
That's great. Yep. Okay. And then um, Keiko. I think that's a co co, co Yo, go, 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 go. She's part oh, of the confidence builders. Yes. Okay. Same. Got it. So yeah. Hmm. Okay. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right. So I I just inhale something. So what I want to do is is just very quickly because I want this to be more interactive and we really don't have that much time is share some slides that I shared at TLI and maybe that can help us in kicking this off. So I'm just going to remind us all very quickly that our club mission is to provide a supportive and learning environment or experience in which members are empowered to develop, uh, per develop communication leadership skills resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. So just the, keeping that in mind as we're setting up the hybrid club is very important. So also just some definitions really quickly. In person is what we have done for most, you know, 100 years of Toastmasters. Online only is just Zoom. And then we have the hybrid, which means that some percentage of the participants are local and some percentage are on Zoom. Now, I think there's, a, there's another definition, and when I was registering for this myself, I think there was a little bit of confusion. There's also people who meet half the time in person and then half only on Zoom, and those are not hybrid clubs. Those are some kind of like half in Zoom, half on, in person. Hybrid is, when, is what you see in this picture. It's like there's people on the screen and there's people in the room. So when you have two meetings in person and two meetings on Zoom, you don't have to deal with it. It's actually simple. But the problem is then if your club has members who are in Montana and wherever, they're missing half the meetings and that's not good. And we think about the club mission, we're not providing an educational experience for everyone who's paying, right? So that's a, just something to be aware of when we're thinking about how do we help our members. Okay, so I think we all know this. I'm not going to probably spend a bunch of time, but hybrid, so many people have moved away right now. And actually, I would love to hear. Um, so Monica, Ryan, and Kay, Kayoki, I'm so sorry, I'm probably saying it wrong. Did you guys, why are you guys doing hybrid and not just in person? Just real quick to hear. Yeah, have we have a okay? few club members. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We have a few club members that are no longer in the Bay Area, and we wanted to make sure that we keep all of our members as we move towards um, the hybrid model. Um, in yeah. Previously, we did in person, and we wanted to move back to that, but we wanted to do hybrid because we wanted to keep a lot of the people who had to move away. I think that's what's really going on is during the pandemic, we, we lost a lot of people moving away. And did you guys get any members who joined that live somewhere else? Um, yes. Yeah, we had one person who lives in Tahoe and joined us. And then we had another former member who had left pre-COVID, moved to Nevada, and he rejoined because he was able to join us online. Mm -hmm. That's fascinating. Very, it's such an interesting um, life that we live nowadays. Okay, and then I love this accessibility. So there's a lot of people who have never been able to go to Toastmasters until the pandemic, and then they were able to join, and now they want to keep going, but they don't have a way to get to the building for whatever reason. So I think it's really, really special to be able to have all this accessibility for people for whatever reason that they maybe they can't drive or public transit's very bad, whatever it is. Okay, so let's talk about the very basics. Keep your equipment in a safe location. And I've been being reminded of the old days. I just got back from the, the international co convention. Monica, you were there with me, right? Good times. But in the old days, I, I was chatting with different people. We used to have a, 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 a like a, what is it called? A basket or like a, a container that was full of items. And we would drive that around to the meetings. And, and when the, um, the sergeant arms couldn't make it, someone would have to go and bring that basket full of ribbons and gavels and all of these podiums and things. 
they would bring it to them in case. So this is, it's similar to the old days where we had to either lock it up or have it driven around. But just keep in mind, we did know how to do this at one point. But the thing with laptops, you don't want it to get stolen because it's very expensive. Whereas if no one wants to steal a gavel, okay? <laughs> like no, no one's ever stolen a gavel in their life. It's not something we, people want to steal. But laptops are very valuable. So think about that. And then this is my main worry in life. It's like already we're asking so much for officers and now we're asking them to do even more. So when you think about your club officers, are you burning them out? You need to have a team. So I recommend having a tech team. So in my club, we have our Sergeant Arms, who is the main person, but then she has several helpers who she's trained and we have a checklist so that everyone else can help if she's not able to come and we have a locker that's, where we that's they can't do we can't do it without that you're right all right can't be burning out our skill mm -hmm. special it, special set of procedures yes it's a valuable skill in our modern world and that's how we sell it to the people who need to help join that team like you're learning a skill you're putting on your resume so do you trade off as the uh, tech team support? Do you trade so we meet off once members? A month. We, we meet once a month. So even though she's trained other people, she's still the main person, but I, eventually she's going to go on vacation and then we'll we'll test out to see how good okay. the other people are trained. But yeah, you, you basically having a checklist of like, this plug goes into this port that's really important because that's the thing is like no one knows how that screen gets connected to the laptop right and that's okay. the kind of thing where you want to have a checklist of first try port a and if that doesn't work then use port b and then toggle this button whatever those special instructions are you want to have that printed out and like taped to the bottom of the laptop or something so that it it's like there and no one's like how do i connect to this projector so that's and what this says approximate approximate time that, it, that you should get there early to to get things set up and the kinds of things you should practice with mm -hmm. before the meeting okay. we, you guys i'm just going to remind us in the old days which i've been in toastmaster for 17 years so for 15 of them, I would drive to a place. And if I was, you know, if I was president, I was always there 15 minutes early because I would be setting up the room. So this is something we've done. We know that how to do this. We just have been spoiled for the last three years where we didn't have to do it. But the truth is, in the old days, we used to print things out, put it on each place, put out the, you know, the ribbons and the, you know, all the flat, you know, all the things. So yeah, this is just the going back. And if you can make that checklist good and you can streamline the process, you can make it very easy. So it's like a 10 minute setup, but I would say 15 minutes is like gonna be how long it takes. Okay. Oh, and then the next thing is money. Everything is so much more expensive. I hear this from a lot of club officers nowadays, rent. People are having to rent a location. So can anyone share, like, how's your venue situation? Well, we're learn we want to start a hybrid meeting because I'm in North Idaho. There's another member in Arizona. And we are members of the club that moved away. There's another one that lives out in Discovery Bay and commutes towards Stockton. So for him to go to Pittsburgh would be very hard and then opposite. So that's why we're talking about holding hybrid meetings half the time and then Zoom meetings the other half of the time. Mm. See, so, okay. So that's good because then you can always join. So that's, I yes. like that. So ours is with the chamber office and they haven't said anything about wanting to charge. But I'm going to find that out next month when I'm in town. I'm going to go and try to set all that up. Got it. So all right. I'm, I'm kind of curious about equipment. What do you, mm -hmm. I know you need a laptop and you need a big screen. Mm -hmm. What else? 
I have I have a breakdown and in fact I think I have a spreadsheet. Um excuse me. So I, I do have the equipment list in one second. So I, I think this is the thing that people are struggling with is are you creating a quality meeting for everyone or are you just treating one group as the, the first class citizens and then you have another set, second class citizen that everyone ignores? This is, we do not want this. Everyone is an equal member of Toastmasters. It doesn't matter if they're joining by Zoom or if they're in person, okay? So that's the other really important thing. Okay, so I have this list of equipment. I'm gonna paste this in here. And my VPE or my SSA, I should say, Sergeant at Arms, she helped me build this list and she's the one who's been buying the equipment. She is amazing at looking for deals. I am just like, I wish she and I were like better friends so that she could help me shop all the time. But look at this. So she has a really good camera for $19.99. She has a microphone. It's got three mics. So we're able to have some person who's waiting in the wings, like the green room, you know, they're standing there ready to come on deck. And the person who's at the at the podium has the lapel mic already on. And then we can pass a third mic around for like table topics or something. Although I always recommend everyone come to the front of the room. So three mics for 20 bucks. It's amazing. A tripod because the camera angles are really important. And last time, which I highly recommend you guys watch the video from last time. Uh, I think it was Steve today or maybe it was Ed Cullen. I can't remember who was saying it. But they have a phone that is just dialed in into Zoom. By the way, it's muted um, and the sound is turned off. Because someone was talking about all the echoes that can happen. So it's just a camera that gives like another view of, of the group. So um, yeah, we can talk more about how to set up cameras and things. And then a laptop. I cannot believe she bought this laptop for so cheap but you do have to have a Costco membership. So if one of your people has a Costco, so they bought it for, she bought it for 150 and it's, it's fine, it works, right? It, it's fine. And by the way, I think it was Ed on the last meeting that said that he's seen meetings that are running only on phones. I can't believe that. And I don't think I wanna join that meeting, but you can go pretty low. And the thing is you can't really see people. I think they must have a screen to let people be seen. Okay. Other things you need is like a Wi-Fi connection. So if you are going to an office of some sort that has a connection already, that's great. But if you don't, for some reason, you're meeting in a barn, I don't know, Wi-Fi, laptop speaker, so people can hear, $30. Um, so our room for our club is very tiny. It's like a six person room. So we can hear from the laptop. We don't need a speaker. But if you're in a bigger room, you're going to need a speaker and then a screen or projector. So if you don't already have a TV or a screen or projector in the room, you're going to have to go get one of those. And that's a lot more. So this is other costs if you don't already have a venue. So these are just a breakdown. And I'll, I'll paste this link of this presentation. All right. So here's some do's and don'ts. But I think we've kind of covered all those. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop and so uh, uh questions thoughts what what else can we cover today that can really help you as you go through this process i like the yeah. idea of a second uh phone or camera to be able to focus in because we have a podium at the front and if somebody has a we have a webcam that's on the tripod connected to the to the sergeant at arms computer and anybody who comes to the meeting with their laptop in the room uh silences they they're as you said the, the mm -hmm. both the speaker and the and the microphone uh but that's that's a good idea the one thing that we tried in because we're a corporate club so we were trying to use the projector and the speaker through the projector but there was too much of a a, a delay it's a fraction of a second delay using using that and it it was too distracting so now we just use the sound on the tv project 
have have that that TV log, logged in and displaying the Teams meeting from the uh, Sergeant at Arms computer, and use the TV sound, and and that's that's working okay. Yeah, I I think projectors, you know, they're probably five, ten years old or something, right? I mean, who's making projectors anymore? And so they probably are not, they never thought people would be using them in this way. So they probably weren't built with this kind of consideration. So yeah, that's fascinating. So I, I think the main thing is this. So you want to have a screen where you're seeing everyone in the room. And so like if there's a bunch of people around this table, and I'm the speaker, then I would want to have one camera somewhere pointed at them so that the people on screens can see the faces of the people in the room. And then you want to have a camera that's for the speaker. And then you can have maybe another camera angle that can show the people in the room if they have other, if they like more of a, like a close up or something. Um, so that's the main things. And then everything else is based on how big the room is like having extra speakers. The other thing is microphones. So someone last week, last time was talking about having this automatic mic that just rotates and finds the person talking. I don't believe that's a Toastmasters discipline. Like we go to the podium, we shake hands and we transfer the mic or we have a, you know an extra mic and then we go, only one person should have the mic, right? It's like the, the conch shell in uh, Lord of the Flies. We don't want everybody talking at the same time. So I think having that discipline of going to the front of the room and being a speaker is something that we need to keep and maintain back from the old days. And so that way you don't have to buy some fancy microphone that's just broadcasting, like picking up anyone's voice. Um, so that's another point. Okay, other questions or thoughts that, or worries that people have? And we can stay a few minutes extra if people have more discussion. So my question is, and I'm thinking of the room that we're going to use. There is a big screen TV up there that will show everybody. I have to find out if there's a camera in that TV. I'm not sure if that TV has a camera. So I'll probably have to get a camera for mm -hmm. that TV. And that will show everyone in the room mm -hmm. to see the person that is at home that would be on the laptop at the front of the room so everyone yeah. can look at the laptop and see the person at home person or persons at home correct um so the way we have it in our club is the the, the screen, we have a TV, a big TV, and it's actually at the end away from the speaker, but it's really big. So everyone can look either at the screen or at the speaker in the room. So if someone's speaking, then there we actually spotlight them and we can see them on the big screen. So you're looking either this way or that way. Um, if you're sitting in the audience, like I said, this is a six person round table. It's like, it, it's not your normal. That's why I'm saying like every room is going to be so different. Um, okay. For the, I, I saw one for the, we did, when we did the award ceremony, the screen was behind the speaker. Um, I didn't like that because then the speaker, because I went up to speak and I would have to turn around to see the audience reaction which I want to see everyone's reaction. Also, I want to make sure that I'm in the center of the screen and I'm not like off to the edge doing some gesture, right? So that I, I think the speaker should be able to see the screen without having to like turn around. And that, that might just be a preference, but that's sort of what, how I think of it. I would like to see my audience at all times as a speaker. Okay. Bye. All right. So what other questions do we have out there? So we talked about the price of the equipment. I, I pasted the link for the slides in here. Go look at those pieces of equipment. Those are the basics. And you you could try, you know, having, I'm going to actually for this next hybrid meeting that we have, because we have it only once a month, I'm going to try adding a, a phone 
just have another angle of audience. Let's see, one of the other things that we've noticed for you talked about the inclusiveness that we that we've been trying to include in our evaluations is as people are look as the speakers are looking around the room, getting the eye contact with the audience, having them include that camera as part of their eye contact so that so that they are including the people that are online. Absolutely. And, and having that as a deliberate part of the evaluation as well. I, oh, I that's think that's a good point. Yeah. I, I mean, as I think about the future of conferences, there is going to be so much hybrid conferences because there's always these people who just can't make it for whatever reason to this in-person event. So we as speakers, being able to include the people who are remote, it's a big value for us as speakers to, to practice these skills. So I think we need to remind our members that this is not just some random skill that you have to just do here. This is something that's transferable for the rest of our career. Okay. Right. Anything else? Any other tips that people have had? Because I really want to hear if anyone else is doing something that's working. Anything you guys can offer and tips on what's working will will help us and our club. I, I'm gonna go. It. I'm gonna go find the link from last time's video and take a look at that. Steve today, Ed Cullen, Lisa Fairchild, these guys, these folks have done some really good stuff, and they go through like the top. Oh, David Bloom. They go to the top practices. Each of them did three things that everyone needs to know about. And I'm just coming up with the ones that I have been thinking. But take, it's also like maybe 40 minutes long. So take a moment um, sometime. You can have it on in the background like a podcast and listen. Because these people Thank have been doing it for a while. And they really, really have figured out some good stuff. All right. Okay, well, great. thank you. I'm so Nancy. I'm glad you're still able to participate in D57, even though you've moved to Idaho. Yes, I'll have to catch up some time and hear how that's going. Okay, sounds like fun. Uh, it's good to meet some people I haven't seen or met before, and good to see Monica, who I just got back from the Bahamas with, and we were partying out there. <laughs> All of you need to go to the next international convention, it's a really good time. All right. Thanks, Beth. Thank All right. Have a evening. I'll post this video also. So join that Facebook group. Let me, I'll paste okay. that one more time. Join the Facebook group so that you can share what you're learning and also hear what other people are learning too. All right. All right. Thanks. Thank Take you. Care.